My next guest is a South Carolina native and chair of the Democratic National Committee. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Jamie Harrison. Good to see you again. It is great seeing you. Let's talk about this Saturday. So yeah. this is a little controversy because this is the first time that South Carolina will be the first primary for the Democrats. New, New Hampshire happened uh, uh, last week, two weeks ago. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, I think, yeah. Okay, the New Hampshire primary has already happened, but that's not official. No. Okay, so um, who do you think is going to win? Well, um... Dean I, Phillips coming on strong, the Dean machine... He's I, almost he's, he's almost at a percent. Stephen, I think the people of South Carolina actually are going to win, and this is why. What, they, That's the most political answer. Well, I've well, ever listen. Heard. But it's the truth. Okay, go ahead. It's the truth. Think about this. For the entirety of my life, I'm 47. I'll be 48 next uh, next week. Have For the good. entirety, thank you. For the entirety of my life, Iowa and New Hampshire has always kicked off this presidential primary process. Mm -hmm. Great states, great people in those states, but those states aren't reflective of the diversity of this nation or the diversity of this party. And so when you think about South Carolina, South Carolina is a state where 40% of enslaved people came into the, this country through the Port of Charleston. 90% of African Americans across this country can trace one ancestor to South Carolina. It's a state, you know, Robert Smalls, all of these great, uh, great people, Brown versus Board started with Briggs versus Elliott in South Carolina. The progeny of those folks, the progeny of those enslaved people who have been relegated to the back of the bus for most of their lives will now be driving the bus. They will be that state and those folks will get the opportunity first to pick the most powerful person on the face of this planet. That's a big deal. And it only happened because Joe Biden, Joe Biden said, I see you, black folks in South Carolina. I hear you and you matter, you count. And I believe that you, and, your, and the voters in that state should be first. And that's a big deal. Well, well let, let's talk about your, your counterparts over on the Republican Party. Yeah. For a long time, there was a criticism. Bless criti their hearts. There was a criticism. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm from South Carolina. I know what that means. I know what that means. Is that uh, the one criticism of sort of the big tent of the Democratic Party that there's so many, it's such a coalition of, of disparate yeah. interests that they're always in fighting. You know, you, 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 had, you had, you know, uh, these people want green, but maybe that didn't please the unions <laughs> for, for like for green energy or green cars to take over. Um, high, you know, uh, strong support for Israel, but that's setting, that's upsetting Palestinian Americans or the Muslim voters in, in Michigan. There's, there's conflicts within the party. There always have been conflicts with the Democratic Party. Are you surprised to see so much conflict within the Republican Party right now? because they managed to keep everything separate for so many years. There was basically um, national security, military Republicans, there was low tax business Republicans, and there were social conservatives in the Republican Party, and they didn't really get in each other's way. But now you have people like Tommy Tuberville saying like, no, I won't pass the military appropriations, I won't actually allow people to be promoted in the army because of my stance on a social issue. You got people who won't give money to Ukraine because of uh, troubles at the US border, what, what do you make of the fact that for the first time you're seeing this kind of clash internally in a party that used to be lockstep? Yeah. Well, you know, there was never a whole lot of diversity in, in the Republican Party, at least in the modern-day Republican Party. But now the diversity you have is the, the sane, which is the minority, and the extreme, which are the majority. I mean, when you think about the MAGA Republicans in the... In the think about this. You know, in, in this party where... where well, former president said, Mr. Gorbachev, take down, tear down this wall. You now got the Marjorie Taylor Greens who are the biggest cheerleaders for Putin, right in the Republican Party. Donald Trump believes Putin's his best friend, BFF of, forever, right? It's one of the right craziest things about the modern Republican Party is that the party of Lincoln is talking about secession. They're killing a border deal, so they're for open borders and they're pro-Russia. And they don't know that slavery was the cause of the Civil War, right? <laughs> I mean... Mm -hmm. I, sometimes you wonder, like, did they miss history? Did they go down to the bleachers and just you know, smoke up a few cigarettes or something? I mean... A few cigarettes. Uh, few or cigarettes. something. That's interesting. Some, yeah, th those something. funny cigarettes those that my fun, grandma exactly. talks about, right? 
Your grandma talks about the funny cigarettes? Well, you know, those young kids smoking those funny cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> you got a pretty hip grandma over there. <laughs> so uh, what about what about Nikki? You know Nikki Haley. I do know Nikki uh, Haley. Do you, do you think oh, that God. she's going to stay in? How do you think she's going to do in her home state of South Carolina? Because there hasn't been a ton of polling, uh, you know, uh, uh, on this. Her terrible worst numbers were actually... Uh, a while ago, what what, what do you think? Well, predict, well, miraculate, Jamie well, Harrison. Well, terrible is a good definition for Nikki Haley. I mean, for those of us who know her, Woo! Um, uh, I mean, fighting words. Well, Jamie listen, Harrison. this is a person who allowed her own hometown hospital to close. I mean, she she uh, signed the most restrictive abortion ban in the country. She allowed, she blocked 250,000 people from getting health care in South Carolina because she wanted to, uh, you know, own Barack Obama. I mean, it, it's, Stephen, when you think about it, all of those mega apples are rotten, regardless if it's Nikki Haley or Donald Trump. So, and <laughs> this is what we're going to do. Regardless of who comes out of it, and it likely is Donald Trump, the DNC, under my leadership, uh, under the leadership of uh, President Biden, we are making historic investments to make sure that we have the boots on the ground in all of the states, that we have the messaging mechanism in all of the states. That's how we beat back the red wave. You know, a lot of people were like, oh, the, the polls, red wave, red wave, red wave. They're a bunch of red tears, Ron and McDaniel and the folks over at RNC, because we were able to push back and we built the infrastructure to have the best midterm election for an incumbent president since 1934, right? So I, I want folks to know, no hand wringing. This is a no hand wringing zone. I know you might be nervous about the election, yet we all are, and we should be, because so much is at stake. This is about progress versus chaos. It's about hope versus fear. It's about one president who wakes up every single day thinking about how do we make life better for all of America's people? And you have another president thinking about who can I get revenge uh, on when I become president again, right? So. The stakes are high. It's about, it, it's about protecting our freedoms. And uh, I hope, folks, get a plan. Go to IWillVote.com. Figure out how you're going to vote. But in the end, make sure you go and vote for Joe Biden. Jamie, thanks for being here. Yeah. DNC Chair Jamie Harrison, everybody. We'll be right back.